is demanded of them under international law. Borders. The principle is clear. I don't want to get into it now because I was very glad to see that Dr. Ben-Ami quoted it three times in his book. It's inadmissible to acquire territory by war. Under international law, Israel had to withdraw from all of the West Bank and all of Gaza. As the World Court put it in July 2004, those are, quote, occupied Palestinian territories. Now, however you want to argue over percentages, there is no question, and I know Dr. ben Amni won't dispute it, the Palestinians were willing to make concessions on the borders. What percentage? There's differences. But there's no question they were willing to make uh, concessions. Jerusalem. Jerusalem's an interesting case. Because if you read Dr. ben Ami or the standard mainstream accounts in the United States, everyone talks about the huge concessions that Barak was willing to make on Jerusalem. But under international law, Israel has not one atom of sovereignty over any of Jerusalem. Read the World Court decision. The World Court decision said Jerusalem is occupied Palestinian territory. Now, the Palestinians were willing, exact, the exact lines I'm not going to get into now, they are complicated, but I'm sure Dr. ben Ami will not dispute, they were willing to divide Jerusalem roughly in half, the Jewish side to Israel, the Arab side to the Palestinians. And number four, refugees. On the question of refugees, it's not a dispute under international law. Remarkably, even fairly conservative human rights organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, in 2000 during the Camp David talks, they issued statements on the question of the right of return. And they stated categorically, under international law, every Palestinian, roughly five to six million, has the right to return, not to some little parcels, 1% of Israel, which Israel is about, uh, which would Israel would swap, return to their homes or the environs of their homes in Israel. That's the law. Now, Dr. Ben-Ami will surely agree that the Palestinians were not demanding and never demanded the full return of six million refugees. He gives a figure of uh, four to 800,000. In fact, I'm not gonna get into the numbers because it's very hard to pin it down. Other authors have given figures of the tens of thousands to 200,000 refugees returning. That's well short of six million. On every single issue, all the, ca all the concessions came from the Palestinians. The problem is everyone, including Dr. ben Ami in his book, he begins with what Israel wants and how much of its, it wants it's willing to give up. But that's not the relevant framework. The only relevant framework is, under international law, what you're entitled to. And when you use that framework, it's a very, very different picture. If you can bear to make uh, this response brief, yes, uh, yes. Dr. Uh, Shlomo. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, in, the, in the last third part of the, of the, of the book, uh, as uh, Dr. Finkelstein says, there is the diplomat. And uh, uh, th this same diplomat uh, still behaves uh, in a way as a historian when he says in this book, that Camp David was not the missed opportunity for the Palestinians. And if I were a Palestinian, I would have rejected Camp David as well. This is something I put in the book. But Taba is the problem. The Clinton parameters are the problem. Because the Clinton parameters, in my view... Maybe you can explain them what that is. I don't think most people will know the Clinton parameters. So well, the Clinton the parameters say the following. They say that on the territorial issue, uh, the Palestinians will get 100% of Gaza, 97% of the West Bank, plus a safe passage from Gaza to the West Bank to make the, the state viable. Um, there will be a land swap. The 97%, which I mentioned, takes into account the land swap. 
where they will get 3% on this side within the, state of, within the State of Israel. So we will have the blocks of settlements and they will, and they will be able to settle refugees on this, side, on this side of the border. About Jerusalem, it says uh, uh, what is Jewish is uh, Israeli and what is Palestinian is, uh, sorry, and what is, what is Arab is Palestinian. It includes full-fledged sovereignty for the uh, Palestinians on Temple Mount, on the Haram al-Sharif, no sovereignty, no Jewish sovereignty on the Haram al-Sharif, which was at the time and continues to be a major, major uh, problem for, uh, for Israelis and Jews that, uh, that these, these, these things mean to them uh, a lot. And then uh, with the question of refugees, it says that uh, the refugees will return to, to historic Palestine, to historical Palestine, and that uh, Israel will maintain its, uh, its uh, uh, sovereign right of admission. That is, it will have to absorb a number of refugees, but uh, with uh, uh, restrictions that need, need to be negotiated between, uh, between the parties. But the bulk of the, of the refugees will be allowed to return to the, pal the state of Palestine. This is the essence of the, of the, of the, Clinton, uh, of the Clinton parameters. Of uh, uh, what what uh, uh, um, Dr. Finkerstein said here about international law, uh, I want to make it clear, it is important, it is vital for a civilized community of nations to have uh, 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 an access of principles um, based on international law around which to, to run the affairs of, uh, of our chaotic world. It is very important, it is vital, etc. But at the same time, when you go into political issues and you need to settle differences, uh, historical differences, uh, differences that uh, have to do with, uh, with uh, political rights, uh, uh, security concerns, uh, uh, historical memories, etc. It is almost impossible to do things on the basis of international law, but rather on something that is as close as possible to the requirements of international law. The very fact that, uh, as, as Dr. Finkerstein rightly says, the Palestinians were ready to, uh, uh, to make this or that concession is the reflection of them understanding that there is no viability, there is no possibility really to reach an agreement that says let us uh, uh, apply automatically and rigidly uh, the requirements of international law. Former Israeli Foreign Minister Shlomo ben -Ami debating Norman Finkelstein in a firehouse studio. We moved our discussion then to the last time Israelis and Palestinians met for peace negotiations in the Egyptian resort town of Taba in January 2001. This is Norman Finkelstein. What actually happened? What actually happened was exactly as what was announced by the White House spokesman on January 3rd, 2001, the official statement was both the Israelis and the Palestinians have accepted the, the Clinton parameters with some reservations. Both sides entered reservations on the Clinton parameters. Yes. Dr. ben -Ami leaves out in the book both sides. He only mentions the reservations by the Palestinians. Number two, I was surprised to notice one of, the book doc, one of the books Dr. ben -Ami recommends is the book by Clayton uh, Swisher called The Truth at Camp David. I looked in the book on page 402 of Clayton Swisher's book when he's discussing the issue of entering reservations to Clinton's parameters, he quotes none other than Shlomo ben Ami. You acknowledged you call them relatively minor, but you acknowledged that Barack entered, you called it several pages of reservations. In fact, Barack sent a 10 page letter of reservations to the Clinton parameters. It was exactly symmetrical. Both the Israelis and the Palestinians agreed to the Clinton parameters with some reservations. Yeah. Wait, one last point, one last point. Dr. ben -Ami left out another crucial point in his account. He doesn't tell us why Taba ended. It ended officially when Barack withdrew 
his negotiators. It wasn't the Palestinians who walked out of Taba.